Hello. The Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, the original. Uh, we're gonna go back to a season called Waking the Dragons. Battle City is over. Yugi has won the God cards. All three God cards, all three Egyptian God cards. You know, you got Slifer, you got your Obelisk, and you got your Winged Dragon Ra. He's got the Sacred Chicken and he's ready. He's just defeated Merrick. All is well in the world. Kaiba is disgusted as usual. And this conflict is over. Um, now that everything is kind of going back to normal, Kaiba goes back to business and the children go back to school. But uh, on this particular day, um, Yugi decides to skip school. He's gone away and no one knows where he's went. Now, this is a regular occurring thing for Yugi as we continue this season, but I'm not even going to get into that until it's relevant. And by the way, speaking of relevance, my boy, have you seen the hottest fashion in the game, my boy? It's the YT Dan Game King merch. Cop it right now. Link in the description. Back to our story. Now, Yugi's missing. And everybody's looking for Yugi wants to know where he's going. Well, Yugi went back to the museum. And while he's going back to the museum and his friends are looking for him, you got his enemies looking for him as well. Weevil and Rex Raptor are apparently looking to duel Yugi somehow, some way, and steal his Egyptian God cards. Now, I don't know why Yugi would accept a challenge from Weevil or Rex, and I don't know why he played them for such high stakes, but apparently they have this idea that they can just go and duel Yugi at any time, and he'd willingly put his God cards on the line. Why would he do it? That's just stupid. But anyway, that's their plan. But as they're going off to this plan, they bump into this tall mystery man. This mystery man apparently beats the shit out of both Weevil and Rex and steals their souls um, in a hilarious off-screen duel that you didn't see. Now, after that, their souls have been taken and they're basically speaking mumbo jumbo. But right now, you get at this museum, he says that he feels an ancient force reaching out to him. He feels that the God cards are calling out to him and he must go to the museum and hold the God cards up to the God card tablet. Why? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> he holds the cards up to the God card tablet. What a twist. It's a villainous trick. Not like Yugi has not fallen for this before. He went into an alley, gave his Millennium Puzzle up to Bandit Keith, Bandit Keith uh, gave him the old uh, 313 shuffle and uh, ran his shit. Uh, that already happened one time before. Yugi does not learn any lessons in Waking the Dragons, unfortunately. Now, in this episode, uh, he holds up his God cards and the energy is drained from these three mighty cards. The energy is drained from these cards, which brings monsters to this world. Monsters are roaming this world. You can see all kinds of shit. There's Needle Ball. There's fucking electric lizard. There's even fucking uh, winged dragon guardian of the fortress, if you can believe it. They have literally everything and everyone. And there's even more hilarious monsters that you will see as we continue this lesson. Now, all these monsters have come to this world. No one knows if these monsters are real holograms or what. They run a Kaiba. Kaiba Kun. Kaiba Kun. Are these monsters your responsibility? Did you do this? Did you fuck up? Did, did you did you release all these holograms across the universe? Of course he didn't. How the fuck could he do it? <laughs> Kaiba didn't do it. No one knows where these monsters are coming from. Now, I did kind of skip a little part in this, you know, whole thing. We have Rebecca Hawkins and her uh, fucking dad. What was her dad's name? Fucking. Uh... Oh, yeah. We got Rebecca and Professor Hawkins. Yeah. We got Rebecca and Professor Hawking back at it again with another um, side character adventure. Now, Professor Hawking has went down to Atlantis, apparently. He's fine. He's dug. He we went deeper than any diver has ever went. This old man went deeper in the ocean in a submarine than any person has ever went. He goes down into Atlantis. He comes up in an area that's clearly being used by somebody. There's like lights and shit on. You know, there's all kinds of stuff going on. This guy, something's going on down here. 
Now, when he comes down, he takes pictures of things. He looks at things. Apparently, he discovers that, you know, the power of the dual monster has been going on for basically 10,000 years, not 5,000 years like they had thought before. Now, what's hilarious about this is he goes down to Atlantis and like is taking pictures and he's got people with him and he's fucking shit up and he's like all interacting in Atlantis, right? But like Darts lives there with his minions and for some reason, uh, no one kills him or kidnaps him or gives him a, like a bonk for like, you know, trespassing. But you know, it is what it is because you know, at the end of the day, you know, we gotta get this plot going. So basically what happens is he comes up out of there, he's discovered Atlantis, whoop de doo And now at this point, uh, the monsters have become real and no one really knows what's gonna happen next. You know, everybody's pretty scared right now. So I'm gonna skip across this part because this is where it gets interesting. I'm gonna skip some more details. I just wanted to set it up for you. So now we're gonna get to a duel, my boy. We're gonna get to a spicy duel. So what happens is um, one day, <laughs> one fateful evening, we go back to season one of Yu-Gi-Oh. That's right, my boy. We go back to the game card shop. Grandpa is fawning over the cards like never before. He really loves these cards. He's like, man, I've never seen such rare and powerful cards in my life since Kaiba ripped my blue eyes in half. This is so great. Sure hope nobody comes in my card shop and beats my ass. Yes, darts minions, the three Ds. Now I said three Ds because only my true duelist that be watching your boys live streams 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. No, about three D's, my boy. Tell your friends. But the three D's have shown up and they're ready to put an ass whooping on Grandpa Moto. Now, first off, I'm gonna tell you guys that these guys have a very extremely disgusting aggression towards beating old men. They beat the shit out of Grandpa Moto, and later on, they beat the shit out of Grandpa Hawkin. Why? I don't know why they beat the shit out of old men. They love beating the shit out of old men and taking duelist souls. Apparently, that's what we do in Waking the Fucking Dragons. All this and a dragon has not even been awakened yet. So these god cards are stolen. Grandpa Moto gets his ass beat. Yugi, Joey, and the whole gang run outside. What the fuck's going on here? They see the three Ds prominently standing, you know, in the distance. Clearly not an arm's reach because you know Tristan and Joey is some motherfucking thugs. They will beat somebody ass at the drop of a hat. They not even playing. But what's hilarious is they must not be that close because um, they basically get the fuck away with the God cards and challenge Yugi to, you know, come fuck with them if they want the God cards back. When they go try to get the guy cards back, the same dude that took the souls of Weevil and Rex has the guy cards. He tells the Pharaoh, because Yugi has done the transformation, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! He did the transformation. He switched. Now that he's switched into the Pharaoh, he's going to duel this man. And he's like, you fool. You've taken the God cards and your cheeks will be clapped. But if you try to use them, you will be destroyed. And then this man's like, I won't be destroyed because I have the most awesome power. Now, what's hilarious about this duel is this duel has many things in it, many things. Now, first off, I want to point out, what is this Shadow Man? Who is he? What deck does he play? Is he even relevant? Do you even know his name? I don't know his fucking name. Clearly, this man's about to die, but that doesn't really matter because he's playing a Booty Warrior deck using the Marauding Captain, and I think it was like the fucking Fiend Tamer or some shit. I don't know what it was. Basically, he summons out these monsters and they're pretty much useless. And Yugi's like, you fool. You can never clap my alpha, beta, gamma combo, you know, regardless of what deck that I'm using. And he's like, no, you fool. I have the ultimate power creep. I have the seal of Ori Kalkos. He whips out the seal. No one's ever seen the seal before. I haven't seen the seal before. And when I saw the seal for the very first time, it blew my mind. I was like, this card is incredible. A 500 point boost to all your monsters. That's amazing. You know, no cost, no drawback, just activate the seal. Oh, it takes your very soul? Yeah, I, I, I'll still play it. Yeah, if I'm going to get that dub, I'm still going to fucking play it. Now, what happens is he plays the seal of Ori Kalkos. It gives everybody a boost. He gets the advantage over Yugi. 
Yugi's like, that seal doesn't mean shit because I still have my strategy. So he summons Valkyria, the magnet warrior. When he summons Valkyria, he confidently states to this man that there is no card that can defeat this beast. Only the gods can defeat a monster with 3,500 attack points. That has no that has no immunity to anything, <laughs> basically as a vanilla monster. But Yugi said, "Shit, you can't beat it. I challenge you to beat it." He said, "Oh, I can beat it. When I bring my monster back from the graveyard, I'm gonna offer three tributes, and I'm gonna beat you with your own bitch." Now Yugi gets disgusted at this. He's like, "You're not gonna do it, man." He's like, "The power of the Egyptian gods is so ancient and so busted. You can't fuck with it, man. It's gonna kill you." And he goes, no, it's not going to kill me because I got the Seal of Orcalcos. And the Seal of Orcalcos is 10,000 years old. It was formed before the sands of Egypt. Therefore, I have the power to control this great beast and clap your cheeks, Yugi. And Yugi doesn't believe him. But when he summons Obelisk the Tormentor and he gets powered up by the Seal of Orcalcos and goes to 4,500. 4,500. He's like, holy shit. I guess he really can kill my Magnet Warrior. <laughs> Now, what's funny, I don't think I talked about this before yet, and I don't remember if this was exactly in this particular sequence, but I got to talk about this. Yugi makes a misplay. I didn't realize this back in the day, that this was a misplay. I thought that this was just circumstance, because Yugi, you know, Yugi is Yugi. But no, Yugi fucked up. He made a misplay. What's this misplay? Yugi activates Dust Tornado. He activated Dust Tornado. He's going to destroy Silvery Calcos. Silvery Calcos is not destroyed. Can't be destroyed by spells and traps, apparently. He activates the Dust Tornado. Yugi's all surprised. I'm like, why didn't you fucking read the card? I thought you was, I thought you was the fucking king of games. He doesn't read the card. So Yugi makes a misplay, takes a minus one, and um, the guy's basically just laughing at him. He's like, Yugi, you're a fool. Take your neg one. I'm going to clap your fucking cheeks at this point. But basically, let's get back on track. Now, in this duel, after Obelisk kills the monster, you can see that the power of the Ori Calcos mixed with Obelisk the Tormentor is taking a great toll on this duelist. It's de delivering tremendous pain to him. And basically, you hear from the 3Ds that, you know, hey, Master Dot said that that shit's not going to work well, so don't play the God cards in your seal deck. And they say, yeah, that's why we gave it to the old man first. So, first off, these dudes are ages. Yeah, I said it. I'm getting old. I'm getting up there. Don't be don't don't be discriminating based on people's age. Be sending them out as fodder to die in soul duels against the king of games who control Egyptian gods. They set him up because they know because he's old, he's not gonna listen. They know because he's old, he's gonna be real arrogant. So he's gonna just go ahead and try to summon the Egyptian god right on Yugi. Because of this. Yugi comes up with this brilliant strategy. It's, it's literally all or nothing. He uses the heart of the cards, but he doesn't seem so confident. He seems a little shaken because the God cards have been stolen from him. Grandpa got his ass beat. He was duped and going to a fucking museum. The God cards got the good suck. He didn't get any suck. And, um, you know, the Pharaoh's kind of running low on, on, on ancient energies. So basically, he's hoping that the heart of cards really comes through. He's hoping that that destiny draw fucking hits. And it does. He draws some miraculous spell card, combos all the monsters' attack points together, all his magnet warriors, claps Obelisk's cheeks, and destroys Obelisk. Well, that's not it for your boy, because there's more shit going on here. Okay? It ain't it. He claps Obelisk's cheeks. Obelisk is destroyed. And when Obelisk is destroyed, now he, now, now he has to deal with the Silvory Calcos again. He's like, well, I don't have to worry about that because Silvory Calcos is not that great. 500-point boost can't be destroyed. <laughs> he doesn't care. I'm the fucking Pharaoh. But guess what? That's not all the secrets that the seal holds. Apparently, you can summon up to 10 monsters with the Silvory Calcos. Five in the front row, five in the back row. Plus, plus, plus spell and trap back row too, apparently. So you can have, so you got three fucking fields. I guess they didn't really know. Master, master rules is going to be coming around in the future. And you were going to have pretty much three fields. You got your spell zone, your monster zone, and then you got the link zone. But he, you know, he didn't know that shit. 
back back at them times. But the Silver Calcos is going through. And now the Silver Calcos is going through. He can have 10 monsters. So my man puts all these monsters out. And he said, Yugi, it doesn't matter how many monsters you got. Doesn't matter the combos you got. Doesn't matter the tricks you pull out of your hat. You can't clap 10 monsters, Yugi. What you going to do, Yugi? What you going to do? Yugi summons the Dark Magician Girl, activates the fusion wave motion, and attacks all the monsters for <laughs> So this man dies. He dies. He loses his fucking soul to the Ori Calcos. Right before he loses his soul, he can throw the fucking card out of the magic beam that is taking his soul. Now, first off, I have a question. Why can you throw something out of the seal, but you can't come out of the seal? Like, does it mean like things without souls can go through the seal? So does that mean like if he tried to jump through the seal, his clothes would fall off and he would just be naked in the seal and it would take his soul. I don't know. I don't, I'm thinking about this too much. Anyway, his soul gets sucked. Dory Calcos has sucked a new, uh, a new victim. And now that the victim has got a good suck, they're like, well, we're getting the fuck out of here with these God cards. The God cards have now been power crept by the seal of Ori Calcos. They are now useless. And apparently Atlantis is the strongest shit ever. No one ever knew it. And that's just kind of how it is in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, you, 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 there's a random card that's sitting around. Nobody's using it. And then all of a sudden, a card comes out that's so good, it combos with it so well, it just becomes the new shit, the new meta. And that's basically what happened. So what happened is the God cards were power crap by the Silvery Calcos. Yu, Yu-Gi has changed his fucking strategy. And uh, he doesn't have a new strategy. Because even though he has access to probably all the cards, because... You know, grandpa owns a car shop. But I mean, if his grandpa stopped being robbed for at least 10 minutes, maybe Yugi can build a better deck. But anyway, now that the God cards are stolen and we are basically <laughs> chasing down the 3Ds, we're going to try to find these guys in different ways. But honestly, I'm skipping all that shit because none of that really matters. Uh, not for this video anyway. If you want me to talk more about that, you crush that motherfucking like button, man, and subscribe to this channel, please. I'm trying to grow up. I'm trying to blow up. And if you don't crush that fucking like button, I'm I'm going to be right here forever. So help me out by crushing that motherfucking like button and subscribing for more shit like this. Now, anyway, back to our story. We're just going to talk about how they get these new powers. So Yugi has a dream. He has another dream. He has another vision. He's hearing voices yet again. Now, the first time he's hearing voices and waking the dragons, it fucked him. He was hearing voices. He went to the museum. He got the good suck, and it wasn't the suck that he wanted. But then he hears these voices again. He decides to pursue these voices. It's the Dark Magician Girl. Boys, it's not going to go down like you think. The Dark Magician Girl tells him that you got to pull the sword out of the stone. <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Pull the sword out of this dragon, and if you do and it's awakened, you can obtain the power. And he's like, this dragon is the strongest dragon of all. It clapped a great Leviathan over 10,000 years ago, but it had to pay the price. It had to share the pain. And basically, this monster was frozen as the Leviathan was locked away. So now, Yugi unleashes the power of the dragon. Then Kaiba, then Joseph. Now all three guys is running around. You got the 3Ds versus the true 3Ds, the dragon wielders, which is Yugi, Joey, and Kaiba. And they're going to find these guys. Now, everybody has their individual duels. I do have an opinion and an analysis for each one. But again, we're talking about Yugi and his duel with the best of the 3Ds, Raphael. So now that, you know, they don't have any real way to get Yugi baited into these duels, what they decided to do was whoop Professor Hawkins' ass, burn his fucking house down, with no regard of who was inside. Rebecca could have been in there. She could have been dead. Burned his fucking house down. Beat the shit out of Professor Hawkins. Told him to stop studying the mysteries of Atlantis. <laughs> and left him to basically die in the fucking desert, wherever the hell he was at. And uh, he wanders back to his crib. They're now living in a trailer home. <laughs> On the back of a truck. <laughs> 
<laughs> which I mean, it's not funny, but it's just kind of random. It's like, so you burned my house down and blew my shit up, but you left my car and trailer home intact. Or are they so rich they can just go buy a fucking car and trailer home? I don't know. Maybe they're making that Twitch money. Who knows? Now at this time, you know, Yugi gets this proposition because they left a they left a Yu-Gi-Oh card, okay? Okay, Raphael left a Yu-Gi-Oh card in this burnt rubble after burning down the house and accosting these people. And again, they don't call the police. They don't report this. They just go, oh, well, burnt my house down. God damn it. There's a Yu-Gi-Oh card on the ground. It says, Pharaoh, if you want the Hawkins back, you got to you gotta come fight me, Pharaoh. Come and, come and duel me. Duel me for the fate of the, of the professor, of your girlfriend's dad. And Yugi's like, I got to do this, Rebecca. Don't tell my friends because it's going to be dangerous and I got to do it alone. Now, what's hilarious about this is they're setting up Yugi's failure here. They're, they're separating Yugi and the Pharaoh from his friends. By separating him from his friends, he doesn't have the cheerleading squad to tell him, to don't, don't go dark, don't go evil, you know, don't go all the way, blah, blah, blah. Like, he doesn't have that anymore. So because he doesn't have that, he goes out. Now, what I think is two funny things about it. He, Yugi waits till they go to sleep. There's no crime in this world. Except for like stealing Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I mean, seriously. Yugi gets up in the middle of the night and gets on horseback and rides the horse out to uh, uh, the Death Valley. So first off, have you ever seen Yugi ride a horse? Yugi has never rode a horse. Yugi... <laughs> Yugi hasn't driven a car. You haven't even seen Yugi on a bicycle. So how can Yugi ride a horse? I don't know. The spirit of the Pharaoh comes through. Yeah, I guess so. The Pharaoh can ride the horse. But they got this weak animation showing the Pharaoh get on this horse. And it's like, I'm the Pharaoh. And it zooms up. It's like, on a horse. It's just like, it's just random. But it was very jarring to me. So anyway, he gets on this horse. And he rides this horse out to duel Raphael. When he rides his horse out to duel Raphael, he basically yeets the fucking horse in midair like Super Mario does to Yoshi. And I and I assumed that the horse was fucking dead. I burst out laughing. I thought the horse was dead. But then they, then they just straight up, like, lie to you. They straight up lie to you by showing you the next scene. The horse is just standing there all cool. And honestly, I don't know what they do with the horse afterwards because you don't see that horse no more. I mean, I mean, he is standing there. That just might be his fucking spirit. But you don't see that goddamn horse no more for the rest of the three episodes that this, like, trilogy is on. I think it's three episodes or it's at least two. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. But you don't see this fucking horse no more, okay? Now, now that this horse has basically disappeared, it's time for Yugi and this man to duel. Rebecca, uh, Joey wakes up in the middle of the night, I guess, to get some water or the... Or the and basically, um... He's like, where's you? And then Rebecca's like, oh, he told me not to tell anyone. Well, I mean, God, God damn it, Rebecca. Shit. If you're supposed to be my girlfriend and I tell you don't tell my friends what I'm doing and, and you say to them, well, uh, he told me not to tell. Well, guess what you just did? You just told him I'm doing some shit that I don't want them to know. Why would you do it like that? So now they're worried about him. Joey's like, nah, I'm coming, Yug. And they, and they all hop into uh, Duke Devlin's 1969 Oopsie Daisy. And they take that shit out to go find Yugi in Death Valley in a random place. Yugi didn't even know where the fuck he was going. He was riding a horse to a place called Death Valley. Death Valley. For all he knew, Death Valley was right through the middle of the hood. For all he knew, Death Valley was right after... <laughs> <laughs> the worst possible, I don't know, ass whooping he received in his life. But whatever. Now we're in Death Valley. It's time to fucking duel. So this duel is pretty amazing because in this duel, basically you see the difference between Raphael and uh, the Pharaoh because it's basically about Raphael and the Pharaoh here. Now, what's crazy about this duel is that this is the infamous duel where the Yugi, the Pharaoh, actually loses for the first time. And it's iconic for many, many reasons. And they, and they talk about it in this episode. I mean, they literally talk about how Yugi always draws the right card at the right time to win the duel all the time. And Rex even says, it doesn't happen for uh, us normies. 
like us regular guys that play Yu-Gi-Oh. We brick, we lose, we die. That's what he, Rex basically says. But he said Yugi never bricks, he never misses, and Yugi always gets in there for game. So basically, Yugi can't lose. But things are looking bad for Yugi, and Weevil said if he loses, I'm going to steal his Dark Magician. And then Rex says, well, shit, Weevil, you shouldn't steal Dark Magician. You should let me steal the Dark Magician. And apparently, like, you know, that's just cool. You just steal somebody's cards when they lose a duel, okay? But anyway, they're dueling, and at this point, Raphael's getting a huge advantage over this man. On the first turn, he discarded all his cards to the graveyard. By doing so, he used all of his uh, graveyard effects that allowed him to bring all his monsters back and keep them on the field because he had sworn to protect these monsters. Long ago, Raphael was uh, left alone on a deserted desert island because of a shipwreck where his entire family died. And because of this, he was going bananas and he was losing his mind. Um, and he was one step away from rejecting humanity and returning to monkey. But instead, what he chose to do was to fully, I don't know, lose his mind <laughs> and speak to his cards. And at this point, he's really, 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 really into his cards right now. He thinks that his cards are alive and it's protecting him. And his cards are beat to hell. He shows Yugi and says, I'm protecting these cards from the graveyard. I'll never allow them to go to the graveyard and I will not disrespect my cards. And Yugi's basically like, wow, that's crazy, bro. Sometimes shit got to go to the graveyard. If you ask any modern duelist, no one would do that. They would think that this man is a madman. But what he does is this crazy guardian combo and basically puts Yugi in dire straits. Um, he activates a card that allows him to exchange cards in the hand. It's not exchange. And basically, as they exchange cards, he hands over to Yugi the Seal of Orichalcos, and Yugi hands over to him some necromancy card that he uses to pretty much uh, bring monsters back from the graveyard. Yugi takes this card, and he's like, what card did you give me? Now, what I think is hilarious about that, when they walked up to each other in Death Valley and they exchanged the cards, uh, Yugi, for whatever reason, didn't fucking look at it until he got all the way back over to where he was standing to continue to duel. He finally looks at it and it's the seal of Orichalcos. He's like, bro, I can't use this shit. And then he's like, well, you will use it because you're evil. And he's like, oh, I, I won't because no, oh, I can't do it. And then Yugi's like, don't do it, Pharaoh. That shit is evil. And then basically the Pharaoh's like, but I must. So what happens is he gets put in a pinch and he's like, oh, shit, I'm about to lose this duel. Instead of believing in the heart of the cards and waiting on my next draw and allowing my opponent to potentially kill me in one turn with an OTK, I'm going to just go ahead and use the Silivory Calcos. Yugi doesn't like that idea. Pharaoh says, be gone. Sends that thought to another dimension. And now uh, he's playing the Silivory Calcos. He frees uh, his uh, dragon, but his dragon is destroyed because it can't exist on the field with the Silivory Calcos. Unlike the obelisk, the tormentor who survived on the field. Those ancient dragons can't live on the field with the seal. Now, I just want to point that out. You know, the, the god cards are supposed to be power creep. But these new cards can get wrecked by the power creep that power creep that gods? Like, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, he summons, um, he plays it. It destroys Tamias, leaving the Dark Magician. Now, basically, it operated as like a defusion and sent Tamias to the grave or some shit. But... Real talk, my boy. He shouldn't even have Dark Magician Girl in the field. But, that, but I mean, hey, hey, we're neither here nor there. I mean, I, I'm not a, a judge or nothing. I don't know. Judge in the comment. Let me know. Should the Dark Magician still be on the field? Anyway, so basically what happens is now that he only has his Dark Magician Girl, he uses the spell to basically look in his opponent's hand and take control of a card that he knows is in the hand. And since he gave him the necromancy card, he can use the necromancy card to reborn creatures from his graveyard back to the field. And he combos it with catapult turtle and launches those beasts 
at Raphael. Now, that would have been a fine combo. He did that shit to Panic and many other duelists as we just went through the Yu-Gi-Oh! lifetime. I don't know why it wasn't considered evil back then, but it's definitely considered evil now because you see the shocked Pikachu face on the Dark Magician when Yugi says, since he's useless, I'll be firing him off with my catapult turtle. And then Dark Magician's like, oh, no need. And so he shoots him off for some damage. He shoots off all his monsters for some damage. But basically, Raphael just won't die. And it comes down to like one more turn and Yugi's like, Yugi like basically says to Raphael, draw your last pathetic card so I can end this match. And Raphael's basically like, my grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards, but it does contain the quick play spell shrink, which cuts the Dark Magician Girl's attack in half, preventing Yugi from finishing him off. And at this point, Raphael chooses to use his destiny draw. He uses his heart of the card move and he decides to pull his final draw. He goes for the final draw. Ba-dink. He grabs some shit. I don't know. Just some random equip spell with guardian Yatos and uses it as a combo to banish all his monsters. And basically he said, Yugi, because you use the seal of our calculus, you've turned all your monsters to dark shadow creatures. And because they are dark shadow creatures, my guardian Yatos are gonna clap their cheeks in the graveyard and gain power based on every card banished. And Yugi said, no, not my monsters. You can't be doing this. And then Raphael said, why not? And he said, blah. So he banishes all this shit. And uh, at this point, Raphael goes for the OTK. Now Yugi doesn't have his Karibo like normal because he already played it morphed it into Cory Babylon and then uh, tributed it off for a Dark Magician Girl. So Yugi definitely doesn't have Karibo in hand. He's gonna take this damage and he doesn't have any back, back row. I don't know whatever happened to the Mirror Force that he had, but I mean, he definitely doesn't have it this time. He attacks him for game. Yugi lets out the iconic, no! And basically at this point, it's over. The duel is done. Yugi is shocked, shocked and amazed. You got to think about what this man's been going through. He went through Battle City. He fought all those maniac rare hunters. He defeated Exodia. He defeated fucking all the guy cards. He beat Destiny Board. He beat fucking everything. He beat Kaiba. He beat Merrick. He beat everybody just to lose the fucking Guardians. He lost the Guardians, man. Fucking sucks. So he loses the Guardians. Now he's going to lose his fucking soul. He's got the got that old dumbass look on his face. Like, oh, I fucked up. Like, So now he's dead. And the Silvery Calcos is coming in to take his soul. Yugi somehow decides while he's in the, on the in the astral plane, he says, with the power of the Millennium Puzzle, I break the seal. But there is one problem with that. In the first episode, Yugi tried to activate his Millennium, the Pharaoh tried to activate the Millennium Puzzle in the seal. And when he was in the seal and he activated the puzzle, the puzzle just was negated. He couldn't use it. But now Yugi can use the power of the Millennium Puzzle to break the seal of Orichalcos. And he basically says, well, instead of saying run Pharaoh, I broke the seal. Get the fuck out of here. Let's dip. <laughs> Instead of doing that, he goes, well, they only need one soul. And he's like, no, Yugi, don't do it. And he pushes the Pharaoh out the way. And then Yugi gets the suck. This whole time, the Pharaoh's been trying to get that suck for a really long time. The Pharaoh was trying to get that suck way back when he was dancing with Taya on that filler episode. Poor Pharaoh never gets the suck. But Yugi gets the suck instead. And he goes right to the Leviathan. He's gone. And basically, Yugi is uh, in a catatonic state, or the, or the Yugi's body, the Pharaoh, is in a catatonic state. He's, he's knocked the fuck out, and Raphael manhandles him. He picks him up, and he's holding him like a sack of luggage. And they're like, nah, you bring him down here. Don't be running off with my friend. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I've already got everything I need from him. Uh, you can take him. And he's on a helicopter. Raphael just launches this grown-ass, well, nah, I guess he's not grown. 
launches this teenage ass boy. Well, shit, this the Pharaoh launches his ancient ass through the fucking sky, just yeets him. They catch this, I was assuming, like 80, 90 pound dude. They catch him and uh, they're like, wake up, <laughs> wake up, man. Now, any anime, any TV show, any movie you ever watch, you know, when somebody gets killed and knocked out, people always go, wake up, wake up. And it never works. But this time it works. He opens his eyes and they go, yeah, I knew you outsmart him, Yug. What did you use to outsmart him this time? <laughs> was it your debonair skills? Was it your heart of the cards? Was it your ancient pharaoh magic? What did you use this time, Yug? And then he's like, I didn't use anything. <laughs> I fucked up. They got Yugi. He's pretty upset. Yugi's gone. Got his soul sucked. And now the pharaoh is ass the fuck out. At this point, we are going to end this little lesson here with this. All I got to say is that was like one of the, like the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh arcs of all time. I really, I really enjoyed it. I couldn't believe Yu-Gi lost back in the day and watching it back now with fresh grown man eyes. It definitely was a treat. I didn't watch the Japanese version because I definitely wanted the cheese of the English dub to wash over my dank soul. Now, maybe I will go back and take a look at the Japanese version one day so I can get better context as to what actually was going on. But in this version, it just shows a lot. Yami Yugi, the pharaoh, was relaxing on his laurels. You know, he was the type of duelist that he was already the champion and he refused to change. And when it came time to change, it was too late. He was manipulated by his opponent to use some random card he had no experience with and it caused him to hold the L. And when you're dueling in Ori Kalkos, your L is the final L. So what do we learn here? First off, read your fucking cards. Don't try to dust tornado motherfucking seal of Ori Kalkos. MST does not negate. You know this. Second rule we learned here. Power creep is busted. And if you're going to get power crept and your deck's going to change, you're going to be adding shit like the Eye of Demias. You need to be adding shit into your deck that's better than Dark Magician Girl, <laughs> the Dragon Knight. <laughs> and, and rule number three, what else did we learn here? If you don't like and subscribe to this video, there won't be any more content like this. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I love you. And, uh... I end my turn. Bye.